So it's 1 p.m. on the 18th of April, 2024. I'm going to go up there onto the downs above Leeson Road and above Bond Church. Head along this way where there's a little path that goes up between the houses, public footpath. These chimney steps that lead down into a uh, Bond Church. It's a buzzard annoying the uh, local carrion crows. This is the mast of the, ra the radar station just up there on the summit of Ventnor Downs. Right, let's see how far east I can get along here. You obviously can't walk along Leeson Road because it's been closed due to the landslip at the landslip, if you know what I mean. So this chalk grassland is uh, probably the best in Europe or amongst the best in Europe uh, in terms of a uh, diversity of species and rarity of what's in the sward. So uh, lots of calcicoles, limestone or calcareous loving plants, calcium loving plants, things like squinancy wort and uh, rock rose, common rock rose, wild thyme, harebells, all sorts of really, really nice. And early gentian, which is I think the main reason, or one of the reasons it's uh, designated at an international level as a special area of conservation, that's the highest level of protection you can get in uh, in Europe. Special area of conservation. And I think that's because of the early gentian, which is a little tiny diminutive wildflower that only occurs on a, only occurs in the UK globally, and then in the UK only on a very small number of chalk grassland sites and this is one of the main sites uh, various spots around uh, the Isle of Wight on the chalk so places like this which is uh, Bond Church Down and uh, 
I think they're over on uh, Brookdown and West Highdown as well. I have to check that, I'm not sure, but a uh, little tiny thing, very beautiful, but very uh, diminutive and not at all in your face. And this sward is looking quite long now. Um, so things like early gentian love really, really tightly grazed swards, grazed in winter and then uh, very lightly grazed in summer, maybe. And the National Trust, who own this, normally put cattle on, but it doesn't look like it's been grazed that well over the last year, or maybe. Somebody said there were no goats. Well, they haven't seen the goats on here, and I can't see any goats. Um, so the goats are used. Obviously, they're more of a browser, intermediate feeder. So goats eat primarily the woody vegetation, the brambles and um, home oaks as well. They nibble off the home oak seedlings which is uh, why they're a really handy animal to have on a place like this. Because we no longer have our oryx, which is our European wild cattle, which was also an intermediate grazer stroke browser. Obviously, oryx are globally extinct, unfortunately, but they would have done much the same role, played much the same role in this kind of ecosystem as uh, goats do, which are not native. Uh, but they're a good stand-in. Goats and cattle... Obviously, domestic cattle are derived from our wild cattle that we used to have in Europe, oryx. So if you want to see the kind of wild cattle we used to have roaming the forested landscapes and places like this across Europe, go to Southeast Asia, go to India or the eastern plains of Cambodia, and look at um, Banteng, ecologically quite a similar species. Banteng is wild cattle, the Asian version of oryx, essentially. Um, and they've also got gaur, which is more of a interior forest species of wild cattle. It's quite amazing that we used to have megafauna like uh, wild cattle and elephants and rhinos roaming across these kind of landscapes. Back in the day, before we drove them to global extinction, and I do blame humanity for that, overhunting by humans... It certainly wasn't climate climate that did it for those big species that used to be here. I say that with so much certainty, of course, there's still a still hotly debated in the ecological kind of literature. I'm getting really geekish now, aren't I? I do apologise. <laughs> so in a couple of weeks' time, remaining a, a bit geekish, the old Adonis blue butterflies and chalk hill blues, which are specialists on this kind of chalk grassland um, and limestone grassland in Purbeck but uh, chalk is their favourite habitat they'll be here in abundance if you walk along here in mid-May onwards early in the morning preferably it'll be absolutely jam-packed with little blue butterflies which are chalk hill blues most commonly and then adonis blues which are a lot scarcer but are here in good numbers uh, what other butterflies do you get along here I don't know if dark green fritillary may be along here. They're certainly in Coombotton, which is just over, over in that direction. So it's a very different species there. Uh, dark green fritillary. It's a bigger, uh, kind of orangey, greeny, rusty thingy. <laughs> very smart butterfly. And we've also got um, Glanville fritillary butterflies, which uh, are up here now. They were confined down, largely confined to Wheeler's Bay and place spots in the undercliff and along the military road. But my perception is they're spreading quite a lot now, the Glanville fritillaries. As it's warming up, they're more of a Mediterranean species, I think. Are they? Is that true? I don't know if there's any butterfly ecologists listening to this. Tell me if I'm talking nonsense. It's quite probably am. This stuff's a bit of a pain kind of uh, invades, what is it, wild Cotoneaster, I think. Is it wild or is it the domesticated garden escapee Cotoneaster? Whichever, it's an invasive species, or is considered to be that anyway. So keep your ears open for golden oriole. may you hear it calling. If you're exceedingly lucky. Or serin, maybe. <laughs> These are rare birds that uh, you get at this time of year. Very, very, very occasionally.
what a cracking day. So I'm just seeing, going along here to see if I can get to Nansen Hill, which overlooks Luckham Farm. I've, uh, I used to go there a lot, but since Leeson Road closed, you can't get through to there anymore. Hopefully it'll reopen at some point. I'm slightly skeptical about whether it will, but hopefully it will, Leeson Road. But um, for now, you have to kind of walk this way to get onto Nansen Hill. It's normally really boggy, this goat path, goat and cattle path. There are no sheep here, thankfully. Sheep are a pain because uh, whereas things like goats, they just browse off the bramble and uh, blackthorn and hawthorn and that kind of stuff and holm oaks. And the cattle basically rip up the big, uh, oh, there's, uh, there's rock rose flowering. Yeah, so whereas uh, goats and cattle are kind of, uh, well, the cattle are bulk, go for the bulky grasses and the goats go for the woody vegetation, sheep will just nibble off the flowers. So that's why they're such a pain um, if they're grazing these areas in summer, because they literally target the flowers and uh, they can deflower <laughs> a whole slope of chalk grass and like this in no time. They're fine in winter. I mean, a lot of the chalk downs would have traditionally been grazed by sheep so they're not all bad from a kind of a farming stroke conservation grazing point of view but from a you know ecologically cattle and uh, goats are a better mixture than sheep not sure why my uh, van life video has degenerated into a discussion on sheep but um, yeah, do subscribe if you enjoy my videos <laughs> about sheep. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Uh, always a bee fly, one of my favorite little species. Uh, try and get a video of one if I can find one that's settled a bit. This really starts to flower in uh, May time, these, this area of chalk grassland. And it turns absolutely stunning. Just heard some swallows calling up there somewhere, up in the blue. They're migrating in. They're in pretty good numbers now inland, but uh, as ever in spring on these coastal areas, they're very fleeting because they're just whizzing inland, get to their territories as quickly as possible and start feeding. They don't want to hang around on the coast really because they don't breed in the undercliff anymore. They used to breed in St. Lawrence swallows, but uh, in some pillboxes by Old Park, but uh, the pillboxes were blocked up so the swallows can no longer get access to where they used to nest. Sadly, so we've no longer got swallows in the undercliff. I assume they used to be a lot more common breeding in the undercliff in Victorian times when there were more active kind of farmhouses and barns and that in the undercliff, when more of it was farmed, but uh, not these days. So my memory serves me correctly, so you can get through. There's a little gate here, get through to Nansen Hill, and it hasn't been blocked, which is really good. That's where the old uh, car park and toilet block of the Smuggler's Haven used to be. Sadly, the old uh, big landslip here took that all away, so it's now down, down a few tens of metres, or maybe not quite that much, but uh, very sad.
buzzard calling. So now out on Nansen Hill. Lots of primrose in flower. White throat singing, first one I've had this spring, this year. So I'm assuming I can't get down through this gate down here. Let's have a quick look. Since we can't go that way, I'm going to go up onto the top of the downs, I think. I've got the energy. Do a loop round back down to Leeson. Definitely out of puff now, and it's very warm. It's going to be nice and fresh up the top when I'm exposed by the exposed to the breeze. But uh, at the moment, it's really hot. Yeah, lots of skylarks nesting up here, up on the summit of the downs. They nest on the ground. Unfortunately, dogs don't realise that, so they rush around. The owners realise that, but the dogs don't. So dogs rush around and crush eggs and flush mothers off their chicks, and the chicks then get predated by crows. So uh, hence the rule that a lot of people don't adhere to, which is keep your dogs on a lead up here. So this reddish stuff is sheep sorrel. God, I'm out of breath. So yeah, sheep sorrel sounds, turns these swalled reddish up on these gravel, gravelly areas up the top of the downs. And uh, small copper butterflies 
absolutely love these areas because uh, the food plant for the caterpillar is sheep sorrel and where uh, whenever you get a bit of disturbed ground and it's opened up like this that's where the sheep sorrel really really uh, proliferates early successional sort of species and that's what the old uh, whew, small copper butterflies absolutely love so uh, I assume it's a bit early I assume they're they come out in May, I can't remember. But um, these areas where the National Trust have been scraping off the surface and reducing the amount of gorse, that really benefits things like small copper butterfly. These edges are presumably really good for adders. Sort of day when they ought to be out basking. I find them really hard to find, but that's because I'm not a reptile expert. But they are here in a fair abundance. This is gorse, obviously, the yellow. So the downs up here, we're on the summit now of Venter Downs. They're capped with uh, gravels. So the conditions are completely different to the chalky slopes, a couple of metres down slope. And the gravel cap gives it a very acidic soil conditions. And that's why things like Gorse thrive up here and uh, areas of bracken, uh, sheep sorrel, so verand heathers. Uh, somebody else will have to tell me what the species of heathery type things these are. Kalunas or whatever. I don't know, I'm not even going to try because they're oh, just look silly. <laughs> but yeah, it's ecologically very different up here because it's acid, whereas obviously the chalky slopes just below are uh, calcareous. So this may look fairly dramatic, what's been done here, but it's really good from an ecological point of view to open these areas up and disturb the gravel, disturb the ground. It gets the ecological succession going again, starts it up again. Um, which uh, an awful lot of species likes this kind of disturbance. So they're completely closed swards of grasses. They're fine for some species, but they're a load, a load also like broken up ground, fresh disturbance. And then as, uh, as the years go by after this disturbance, uh, There'll be a succession of species colonising and dying out. It'll gradually move back towards gorse again. And they'll open up a new area. So you've got that kind of a patchwork of different conditions, which is what the wildlife needs. And that's why the National Trust does this. So uh, it gets my full support. Another area opened up there. It looks fairly dramatic, but it ecologically it isn't. Ecologically, it's very good. I need to move on a bit because I can feel my caffeine levels are getting dangerously low. And I don't want to run out of fuel up here because uh, the nearest tea room is right down in Ventnor Bay. or well, the nearest one I'm going to go to anyway. Blake's Tea Hut on the sea, on the shore, on the beach does puro coffees, so that's where I'm heading. So this, uh, this footpath cuts down, down slope again, back down to Leeson Road. I used to do this walk several times a day when I was uh, young and keen. <laughs> There's Ventnor. Just see Salisbury Gardens down there. Zoom in. Salisbury Gardens directly in the middle of the frame. I think that's what it is anyway. Yes, it is. It's 
Is that Trinity Church Spire there, I think? Don't really know that church. Don't think it has a church, I would say. So do read the description to this video and I'll uh, link to another video at the end. Um, but at the moment we're just about to cross some really nice chalk grasslands. So we're still on the acidy bit. Tell by the bracken that we're on acid. But uh, just down here it transitions onto the chalk. My bobbing up and down is going to get unbearable as I go down this steep slope. There's a monk's bay down there. Tide is uh, pretty low at the moment by the looks of it. So there have been harbour porpoises uh, feeding off of here according to um, a guy whose name I always forget, marine biologist guy. So a quick scan through binoculars, I think. So if you've got a view across there from, if you live on Leeton Road or something, uh, do scan over to the, scan out offshore, see if you can see any harbour porpoises. And dolphins, obviously. I assume the porpoises are more often here, but they're just a bit more difficult to see. Unless you really look. So we're on the chalk now, obviously. There's uh, the car down there, Flea. Just see him in the lay-by. Oh, let's zoom in. There he is, all on his own. Wallow calling somewhere. Somewhere up in the blue. So the battery's about to conk out on the iPhone mini, so I'm gonna have to cut you off here. Thanks for watching. Oh, we slipped over there. Do uh, hit the subscribe button to this video, to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Read the description below where there's a link to my other channel and uh, hope you all have a lovely afternoon. I'm going to go down and get a coffee.